Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Great to be in the United States of America, here at the University of Minnesota, visiting the Visible Heart Laboratory. Great experience to see where cutting edge technology uh, begins, from the stents, valves, pacemakers, tested and reviewed here in these facilities, animal testing, virtual reality, 3D printing, amazing experience, and that will take you for a little bit of a tour. So again, great to be here and introduce friend and the head of the Visible Heart Laboratory here, Paul Azio. Uh, Paul, tell us a bit about yourself and this fascinating laboratory here. Well, thanks very much. I'm glad you came yeah. all the way from Australia here. Um, yeah, we're in the basement of the Mayo Building. Uh, this is a historic building. It's where some of the first open heart surgeries anywhere in the world were performed back in the 50s, and it's also the place where Robach and the founder of Medtronic brought the first wearable pacemaker, uh, did preclinical testing on it in 1958. And uh, we're fortunate to be in these same uh, hallowed halls. Uh, it, it was, I think, around this time, around Halloween, where he started developing the idea of an actual yeah. battery that kept the pacemaker going without having to rely on power. Is that right? Yeah, it turns out it was Halloween 1957, bad electrical storm in the Twin Cities. We had a storm yesterday with snow yes. and all the power went out in the building and a patient being supported with a grass stimulator plugged into the wall nearly dies. And so then he thought of battery powered backup, but then made a battery powered wearable pacemaker. Would you like to just take us for a bit of a tour and just show us exactly what these facilities are all about? Yeah, sure. Thank so you. again, you know, uh, the lab is huge. Uh, we've got eight PhD students right now, four master students, two postdocs, a staff, um, and it's really a team effort and uh, a lot of different labs, but a big part of ours is outreach education. So I'll kind of lead you through that. Hi, right, this is our micro CT scanner. This is Madeline, actually one of our uh, staff here who's doing uh, a lot of the mimics materialized software maybe making uh, 3d models high resolution 90 microns and whole body scans but we have our own micro ct scanner here in the lab which allows us to get human hearts scan them down to a 90 micron resolution and then um, if we do studies with different devices in there we can focus the energy get down to a 15 micron resolution of the device tissue interface. And then from that, you can make computational models. You can put that in virtual reality or you can do 3D prints, which we'll show you next door. So for example, you were here today stenting and we did a bunch of different bifurcation stenting. Here's a provisional case, which was done previously in a swine heart. And basically with the micro CT, we'll scan it post procedure we can make these um, fly through videos using um, you know, Unity gaming software, but then you can also 3D print them. So it's just kind of a whole mixed reality experience and then put it in VR. And then Amanda DeVos, who's one of our PC students, has put together a whole mobile app where we have over 200 different stents and procedures on that free access app. And Paul, I guess it's all about testing devices before we put them into patients. That's really what it's all about, optimizing results and making sure that safety is of paramount importance. Yeah, that's one a aspect of it. A lot is just early concept prototypes, but again, a lot of it's post market release physician training yes. and understanding what's needed for next generation devices. And obviously 3D printing is a big feature of the laboratory. Yeah, yeah, so I think this is, um, Again, one of the advantages of 3D printing, then you can you know, print a model, uh, you can pick it up. It gives you just that different perspective to get it and visualize it in 3D. So here's a, a, a TAVR stent that was printed post-procedure where we actually did a chimney um, in the right coronary osteo. And this was actually implanted in a reanimated human heart so on today we did a reanimated swine heart, but on rare occasions we've been able to reanimate human hearts. Um, and, and with that, we try to maximize everything we can learn from each of those. 
And I guess uh, procedure planning is paramount, isn't it? Particularly when we're dealing with more complex patients. Uh, anatomies are very unique in all of us. Our arteries are very different and unique. And being able to plan a procedure before you actually perform it in the patient is one of the great advantages of the facilities here. Yeah. And these here are just demonstrations of stents that have been 3D printed based on patients' actual geometries. Well, this is actually was um, 15 micron resolution and it was a step-by-step -step culotte procedure where we um, put in the first stent, then we did a provisional uh, pot, put the second uh, stent in, and then uh, scanned each step, took the heart, put it back in the scanner. And again, then you can actually put this together in a, in a kind of a fly-through video where the, all the steps come, come together in virtual reality as well. Another kind of interesting one here is, you know, the we'll show you in a bit, but we actually have a human heart library where we have over 850 human hearts, and we call it a library. That means any student, any expedition, anybody from any company can come in and study specimens for free. And we're gifting that all back to everybody because the hearts are gifted to our lab. Um, so they can, um, you know, take pictures, they can make measurements, they can take videos, do florals. We have computational models we share, and some of our hearts come in with pre-procedurals in it. Okay. And then, you know, this is a, a stent that was in one of those hearts, and then Amanda was able to scan the heart um, and then print it showing the displacement of the calcium nodules um, that was therapeutic for that patient. Calcium is one of the biggest barriers we have as interventionalists, and you can see quite nicely here the, uh, what, what impact the calcium has. And, how you develop a design that actually treats and resists the calcium forces and uh, to give you a great result. This is our uh, tissue biomechanics lab. Nathan, one of the master's students, Weston, a scientist here in the lab, also a PhD student. And then basically we're looking at viable uh, human and swine tissues doing biomechanical studies. They're doing a bioaxial test here. So you're really looking at the tissue properties um, maybe before and after a procedure or looking at a pharmacologic response. I think today they're doing uh, ablation studies, cryoablations. They have a piece of um, swine esophagus. Um, we've also done this with human esophagus and they're doing a uh, bioaxial stress strain test. And again, we're doing this to understand not only the effects of therapies, but also then we can use that for computational modeling. We're sharing these kind of data with everybody. And then you can also enhance your capabilities to 3D print uh, okay. tissues and structures for better physician training. If you're gonna suture through an esophagus or something like that, then you can 3D print it a lot more realistic because we know what the stress and strains should be. And a big part of the lab over the years has been the Atlas website. This is a free access website. Here you can see a reanimated human heart on here. And again, we've been able to reanimate 98 human hearts uh, we'll shock them into an native sinus rhythm. We do that with a clear perfusate. Uh, so then basically you can look at the functional anatomy inside the hearts. And here's the tricuspid valve inside one of those human hearts. Uh, and then we'll do multimodal imaging. For, so for the first two hours of reanimation, we just collect the images that goes on the free access website. So there's over 5,000 videos and stills that anybody can download any of these. Uh, and again, it's a gifting this all back from an educational standpoint with these hearts gifted to us. And then we can also put uh, devices in them as well, and then they're preserved. Um, so the 98 hearts that we reanimated are in here, but all of their hearts that we didn't get in time for reanimation or were cut up or, you know, there was a lung transplant or something, we still preserve in our heart library. We could end here, but let's just start outside quick. So this is our mixed reality teaching lab. And you know, if you were able to go in VR and I was able to hook you up to this, this is kind of my, what you might see. This is one of our tutorials. This is for transesophageal echo. So the person's in this environment. Uh, there's a beating heart there, but they have a whole echo screen. Uh, they can look at that heart and then you can see the patient and you can advance that TE echo probe. Um, and then basically you can look at different um, scans, uh, the 
scans or images that are recommended that you uh, be able to do clinically, um, the student or resident or fellow can come in, uh, hit one of those four chamber views or something, and then try to see it, what it looks like on screen and try to match it themselves. So it's a really nice training environment to be able to do this in virtual reality. Um, and then, you know, one of the things is not everybody has you know, virtual reality handy. So the lab is put together with David Buick, one of the PhD students and others, um, in collaboration with the Department of Anesthesiology here, Tori Perry and Ben Garbati, some handheld mobile apps. So this is a transesophageal um, echo simulator where basically it's all mobile app and I can advance my probe. So I'm just advancing that probe with an advanced button and you can see it sectioning through the heart there and you can see then the echo view there. But if I want, I can rotate that heart in space and I can show the plane, I can blow it up and then I can continue to, you know, antiflex, retiflex the probe and see how the views will change. Um, and it's a great training tool for this. So this is, you know, a fairly normal, healthy heart. And our goal is to start to put in other myopathies on here as well. Paul Wilk, that's an amazing tour. Thank you for the opportunity. I've loved yep. my few days here. And uh, a great way to actually look at how devices go from ideas, from prototypes, through to testing, and then eventually to patient care. So yeah. thanks again for having us here. And uh, I look forward to welcoming you to Australia next time. All right, perfect. Thank Great. you so much. Yeah.